Sometimes just a warm blaze and the universe to ponder is all you need. Now everybody close your eyes and concentrate. Mm. Concentrate hard. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie campfire scenes. I may, in a practically unfathomable display of generosity, gave the monk the slightest of nods. For this list, we are highlighting the most memorable moments of big screen campfires from feature film only. He ate it all! Shit pudding! <laughs> he ate shit pudding! Number 10. Howl like a wolf, kicking and screaming. Phil, it's freezing out here. It's not Phil, it's Coach Weston. And it's not freezing out here. As a grown-up struggling with the constant presence of an overbearing father, Phil Weston often relives painful childhood memories. Because fire is the stuff of warriors. And that's what we are, right? Warriors? But after Big Daddy Buck shames Phil's own son, he takes control of a little league soccer team and attempts to bond the kids with a motivational campfire speech. Coach, what are we doing out here anyway? We're bonding. We're becoming a team. Surviving the elements here in the backyard. Phil's scare tactics and black comedy didn't quite connect with the young athletes, and the location is actually far from remote. If the pizzas don't arrive, I've already made the decision that we will eat Byung Sung. Regardless, Phil's howling capped off a hilarious campfire scene that left him screaming at the neighbors and scrambling from neighborhood pooches. Shut up out there! You shut up in there! Come on, everyone. Bay at the moon. <laughs> Number nine, he's out there. Friday the 13th, part two. I don't want to scare anyone, but I'm going to give it to you straight about Jason. Five years after the events of the original Friday the 13th film, a group of unsuspecting teenagers gathered for a night of campfire tales. His body was never recovered from the lake after he drowned. And if you listen to the old timers in town, they'll tell you he's still out there. With a slow zoom in shot, counselor Paul Holt recounted the frightening legend of Jason Voorhees and the bloody events that shut down the adjacent Camp Crystal Lake. And he took his revenge. A revenge that he'll continue to seek if anyone ever enters his wilderness again. By interrupting the story only with brief reaction shots, the filmmakers allowed viewers to join the campfire and feel the blaze which ultimately led to thirsty for young blood. <laughs> Remember, Jason's out there. Jason's out there. Watching. Always on the prowl for intruders. I hate to kill. Number eight, Aspen Delight, Dumb and Dumber. I can't feel my fingers anymore, Lloyd, they're, they're, they're numb. After arriving in Aspen to find Mary Swanson, best friends Lloyd Christmas and Harry Dunn find themselves out in the wild and freezing their tails off. Ooh. Maybe you should wear these extra gloves. My hands are starting to get sweaty. As the campfire burns and Harry appears ready to unleash a man cry of pure agony, good old Lloyd unveils his extra set of gloves for his freezing pal. Extra gloves? You've had this pair of extra gloves this whole time? For one brief moment, Harry clearly had trouble on his mind, but the discovery of a suitcase full of money led to a completely different way of life. <laughs> Number seven, what are you gonna do? Oh brother, where art thou? Million dollars, million point two. After escaping from a Mississippi chain gang, three men break free of their physical connections and ponder the metaphysical next to a comforting fire. Pete, what are you going to do with your share of the treasure? Go out west somewhere. Open a fine restaurant. With the group hot on the trail of million dollar treasure, each man explains what they would do with a load of cash. Some detailing their plans in poetic fashion, while others not so much. 
Cinematographer Roger Deakins took home an Oscar for this classic Coen Brothers film, and the characters touched our hearts with dreams we can all relate to. I'm gonna visit them foreclosing the son of a guns down at the Indian over savings and loans. Slap that money on the barrel head and buy back the family farm. You ain't no kind of man if you ain't got land. These three men were bound by destiny. What you have in mind when you stole it in the first place? I didn't have no plan. Well, that hardly sound like you. Number six, Blue Shadows on the Trail, Three Amigos. And dream, little pal, dream of someone. They are silent movie stars turned real life action heroes. We are the three amigos. All hell breaks loose when Lucky Day, Dusty Bottoms, and Ned Niederlander lose their jobs and are summoned to a Mexican village. What am I doing in Mexico? With the trio mistakenly identified as their on-screen personas, they stay in character rather well, and even bond for a campfire performance under the stars. Arizona moon keep shining From the desert sky above We've all come to love the wacky hijinks of Steve Martin, Chevy Chase, and Martin Short, but it was nice to hear them each carry a tune written by Randy Newman in this comedy. Number five, Fire Dance, Dances with Wolves. Sometimes we all need to lose ourselves through the power of dance. After surviving the American Civil War, John J. Dunbar's life of isolation becomes disrupted when he meets a tribe of Native Americans. By embracing their culture, he takes part in a poetic fire dance with his friend Two Socks looking on. Kevin Costner's project took several years to develop, which made the moment even more special for the actor. And his dedication certainly translated to the big screen. Number four, American Freedom, Easy Rider. You know, this used to be a hell of a good country. I can't understand what's going on with it. This poignant scene on American society featured not one, not two, but three acting legends in Jack Nicholson, Dennis Hopper, and Peter Fonda. Man, everybody got chicken, that's what happened. Man. Hey, we can't even get into like a second-rate hotel. I mean, a second-rate motel, you dig? After being ridiculed at a Louisiana restaurant, the hippies rest their heads in the country, and their new friend George Hansen offers an outsider's perspective on the realities of American freedom. What you represent to them is freedom. What the hell's wrong with freedom, man? That's what it's all about. Captain America looks on in silence as Billy takes in the lawyer's words. But soon everything would change, just as America continued to transform into the 1970s. Oh yeah, they are gonna talk to you and talk to you and talk to you about individual freedom. But they see a free individual, it's gonna scare them. Number three, Man versus Beast, The Grey. Although a campfire provides warmth, it can also provide safety. This valuable lesson was demonstrated when a group of plane crash survivors are surprised by a bloodthirsty wolf. Get up, get up, get up. After launching an attack, the angry and outnumbered Alaskan beast stares down the intruders, who stand behind the almighty protection of the glorious campfire. Although the men survived this battle, they wouldn't win them all. Even so, this particular scene highlighted the instinct for survival among man and wild animals, and how a well-prepared campfire can save the day. What do you want? You. Yeah. Number two, fire o' flatulence, blazing saddles. <laughs> Confucius once said that silence is a true friend who never betrays. But perhaps he never let a gang of thugs binging on beans, beans, and more beans. 
in Mel Brooks' hilarious comedy, Slim Pickens plays a power-hungry man hoping to drive out the local folk, but discovers that gang could be too full of gas to get the job done. You might say that the incredible sound design had viewers tearing up, just as the characters probably teared up from the devastating smell of their collective gas cloud. Gee, how about some more beans, Mr. Taggart? I'd say you've had enough. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. I took a bowl that was filled with delicious plum pudding and placed into it not one, but two large pieces of sheep shit. Well, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, here's a story. I scored with these two chicks. True story. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> you scored with two chicks? <laughs> yeah, they were sluts. <laughs> Any room around that fire for a jerk like me? I thought you gave up. I did. I gave up on giving up. Number one, Wagon Train, Stand By Me. Hey, Gordo, why don't you tell us a story? Uh, I don't know. In this classic 80s coming-of-age story, four adolescent kids reminded us of a more innocent time and the power of friendship. And the main guy of the story is this fat kid that nobody likes named Davy Hogan. During a thought-provoking campfire scene, the adventurous Oregon youths take a time out from their search for a dead body and contemplate life's mysteries, such as the true identity of Goofy. Goofy's a dog. He's definitely a dog. The legitimacy of quiz show questions. There's no way anybody can know that much about opera. And Wagon Train's proverbial road to nowhere. Wagon Train's a really cool show, but did you ever notice that they never get anywhere? Just keep wagon training. This scene captured the essence of the campfire experience, along with youthful curiosity. And that's why it's at the top of our list. Not one of us mentioned Ray Brower but we were all thinking about him. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite movie campfire scene? For more mind-blowing top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. I'll try and come back. I'll try and come back because I really like staying with you. You were so much fun.